Everybody says you have to have taqwa, you have to have taqwa, you have to have taqwa, but it's not on sale after the salah, it's outside. I don't know where to get it from. You have this concept, how am I supposed to put it in myself? I've heard that it's really important, and I better have it, right? But it's an abstract thing. That's the beauty of our religion. It takes these ideas, and then Allah will give us in His book a practical way of bringing it inside you. So it doesn't just hover as a philosophical concept. Something called taqwa, I guess some people have it, I don't have it. No, Allah will actually give you training exercises that you can implement and through them get taqwa. And the, one of the most powerful ones of them is what? Fasting. Fasting will give you taqwa. Fasting is hope to give you. Now, if fasting was guaranteed to give you taqwa, here's what you would have read. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لِتَتَّقُوا the lam would have been lam ta'lil li tattaqu would have meant so that you have taqwa. When you say la'allakum, there's a hope that you might get it, but there's not a guarantee. There's not a guarantee. Okay, so Allah is saying this is a way to get it, but only if you do you do it right. It's not like anybody who's gonna fast is gonna get taqwa. So let's explore that concept a little bit. How does fasting lead to taqwa? The idea of being cautious of Allah, protective, secure about Allah. Very simply put. I, I don't want to get technical with you on this, and I'm not going to give you elaborate quotes. My intention, by the way, today is not to be academic. I'm, te- I'm giving this lecture as a teacher. Uh, I'm not a scholar anyway, but not as a researcher. So I'm not trying to you know, present you with scholarly research from this, this source and that source. I've done that homework, and I'm trying to present it in as easy language as I possibly can, inshallah. Okay? So now let, let's talk about this. When you're fasting, especially if you're fasting in, a, in an interesting hot place like Texas in the summer, right? or in the Khalid somewhere, or in Pakistan, or wherever, South Africa. When you're fasting, you're going to feel thirst. And it doesn't matter if you're religious or not, or old or young. This, it doesn't discriminate. Thirst doesn't discriminate. Hunger doesn't discriminate. You're going to feel hunger. And that feeling inside of you is basically your body asking you to disobey Allah. Isn't it? I mean, every ounce of thirst, every second of thirst that you feel, your body is screaming, give me water. Your, your, your stomach is really almost coming up with a song on its own. You know, feed me. There's a war happening inside you. Your body is asking you to rebel against Allah. And there's something in your heart that tells your, your throat and your stomach to shut up. Not until Maghrib. Not until Maghrib. You're fighting yourself the entire day. Yourself the entire day. There's a newlywed couple. He's crazy about her. He just looks at her and he goes, What am I supposed to do? Not until Maghrib. I'm going to hold myself back because I'm fasting. There's the strongest of the urges, intimacy. And of course, the most basic of needs, hunger and thirst. Allah blocked them for the entirety of the day. And you and I, if we're observing our fast, we're literally we're crushing the needs and the strongest desires of our body for the entirety of a day, only to make Allah happy. Only to make Allah happy. And you like, there's a kid who's like 12 years old or 10 years old, he's fasting for the first time, and he's looking at this melted piece of chocolate, and he's got like a little thing of it on his, and he's just looking at it like, and he puts it back. <laughs> Even he's got taqwa. And then you're gonna do this, you know, every time you do this, you're developing a consciousness of Allah. Why is that exercise important? If you can do that through the entirety of a day to block yourself and deny yourself the most fundamental of your needs and the strongest of your wants. If, you can, if you're capable of doing that, then you're, Allah is asking you for a lot less outside of the fast. He's asking you to actually يُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ The only thing He wants to prevent from you are filthy things. You're going to have a much easier time dealing with other acts of obedience of Allah. It's trained you. It's beautiful. You know, I, I put it this way. When, you know, for any tough job, like a rigorous training, like a military training, or police academy training, these kinds of trainings, there's a lot of tough exercise, yeah? And they go through hours and hours of regiments and trainings. And then that same guy decides to join some kind of light gym. And they have a workout routine. And he says, this is a joke. We used to do 10 times this much. Yeah? So when he's come through a much tougher training, anything less is piece of cake, effortless. That's the idea of fasting. It's so tough. So when you're done with this, what Allah is going to ask you after that is piece of cake. You're ready for it. 
You'll develop the consciousness of consciousness of Allah and you'll be much better able to protect yourself from disobeying Allah. 